Welcome to lecture 15 entitled Gene Expression. In the previous lecture on DNA, we established the idea that DNA is our genetic blueprint. It gives us the rules, the details, the literal blueprint of creating life. Now it's time to sort of build off of that knowledge by expressing the genes or the DNA and turning them into something, turning them into a functional thing, which we'll talk about throughout this lecture series. Before we go any further, I think it's important to understand what gene expression is from a definition standpoint. So let's write that down first. Gene expression, and I want to give a very clear, concise definition that we can build off of and refer back to for the rest of the lecture series. We can consider gene expression the following. It is the process by which DNA directs, so by which DNA, and we're going to underline DNA, directs, this is this idea of DNA being a blueprint, directs the synthesis, and we've said it makes something, we still haven't really mentioned what it is, the synthesis of, and I'm going to call them proteins, the synthesis of proteins. DNA directs the synthesis of proteins. This is what gene expression is, expressing DNA in the form of eventual proteins. Now, the rest of this flowchart will be entitled Introduction, but I'm going to be splitting up the introduction into two parts. So this first flowchart will be entitled Introduction 1. And this initial introduction will serve to provide us a sort of background in terms of the history of studying gene expression. Because as you guys know from DNA, there are many important experiments, many important uh, experimenters and scientists that gave us crucial, crucial information about the information that we're about to learn. So let's appreciate and understand the history behind gene expression. And it is a very interesting history indeed. Before we move any forward from the idea of hit, from talking about history, I think it's important to understand one simple fact. You should understand that whenever you say proteins, there are many proteins within your body. An example of a protein that we're going to be constantly referring to in the rest of this flowchart is an enzyme. So keep this in the back of your head that an enzyme is the same thing as a protein. It is a type of protein and an enzyme will be also directed by DNA. A DNA will direct the synthesis of an enzyme, thus it will direct the synthesis of a protein. Keep that in the back of your head. So the first person that we want to talk about is a man by the name of, and we'll do this right over here, his name was Archibald, Sir Archibald uh, Gerard. And this was, his studies and research was done in about 1902. So over a hundred years ago, he came up with this incredible, that's Archibald, this incredible idea. And let's look at it. He was a scientist who studied inherited diseases. Okay, studied inherited. So we're going to underline inherited for a key reason, inherited diseases. So if you haven't already noticed, General Biology 115 has taken a turn in the direction of genetics, studying DNA, studying genes, the inheritance of genes. We're going to continue genetic study by looking at gene expression. We know what genes are now, we know sort of how they travel, the patterns that we see them, whether they're Mendelian or non-Mendelian. Now it's time to actually go on a molecular level and see their expression. So Archibald Gerard, he studied inherited diseases, specifically um, his basic idea, his basic example, let's say, um, is diseases that would involve, let's say, a lack of enzymatic function. Enzymes are all over your body, okay? Enzymes, we've studied many of them. We've studied them, excuse me, during um, cell respiration, during photosynthesis, um, during all these processes, enzymes are the catalyst, okay? So when you have a lack of enzymatic function, he termed this the following. He stated that this is considered an inborn, so he studied inborn errors of metabolism. And we know what metabolism is, of course, as we've already studied this. So it's an inborn error of metabolism when your enzymes don't function because then you don't have proper catalysis. Then you don't have proper, let's say, um, active site arrangement. You don't have proper uh, overall sort of, let's say, function because enzymes are going to dictate many of the functions necessary. But what we need to understand and ask ourselves is a couple of key questions as in why and how. 
How does the lack of enzymatic function show inborn errors of metabolism? So let's look at what Archibald Giraud discovered. He figured out the following, that genes themselves, genes, otherwise known as DNA, gene expression, this is what we're about to talk about, genes are actually responsible for enzymatic function. Process, uh, phenotype, let's say. What I mean by this is that when a gene codes for an enzyme, when DNA codes for an enzyme, that enzyme will eventually function. And that functioning enzyme is known as the phenotype. When a phenotype is correct, when the enzyme functions correctly, you have correctly synthesized a protein. You have correctly synthesized the correct enzyme. Furthermore, this idea simply means that Mendel's law, because he studied inherited diseases in humans, actually. This idea actually tells us that Mendel's law certainly and indeed applies to humans. Let's say Mendel's laws applies to humans. And this is absolutely crazy because you would think us being, you know, the advanced species... We don't have to follow Mendel's, you know, basic laws of inheritance. That's just the pea plan. But of course, that's not true. What this in initially sort of states, this idea that Giraud came up, final idea that you should understand, is that genotype dictates phenotype. And by this, I mean that we have certain relationships in human genes such as dominant versus recessive. If you have, let's say, a recessive gene being expressed um, for an enzymatic function, a lack of enzymatic function, you are going to then express a phenotype that shows loss of function. Okay, So overall, the idea behind Archibald Giraud is very simple but very powerful. He proved that when we have so associated diseases that involve a lack of enzymatic function, that lack of function is due to inborn errors, specifically errors that are responsible for enzymatic function phenotypes. If an enzyme needs to do a specific job and it's not doing that job, that is because of an inborn error. And that is because the genotype has an error within it that dictates an erroneous phenotype, a bad phenotype which is furthermore sort of established by a dominant versus recessive relationship that's also applied to Mendel's laws. In the second part to this history introduction video, we're going to be looking at Beetle and Tatum and their experience and overall results, and we'll complete this history analysis by one final idea of one gene, one protein.